Hey, hi guys, welcome to Cafe IO. Cafe IO में आपका स्वागत है In today's video, we will be using Python and coding a trading strategy. That's right. This video is going to talk about how to build your own trading strategies in Python. And very specifically, we will be using machine learning and a technique called neural networks to code around it. Let's get started. So I have my Jupyter Notebook open. And we'll just start by doing the standard imports. These are standard stuff, which where I'm importing NumPy, Pandas, TLib, and Yahoo Finance. I'm sure you're familiar with NumPy and Pandas, but TLib and Yahoo Finance are libraries which are specifically designed to get a technical indicators, you know, Bollinger Bands, moving averages, oscillators, etc. That that are very common in trading. And Yahoo Finance is a library that helps us get market data and is an excellent source of historical data. After that, we are just setting the random seed to 42. This is just to make sure that we randomize things wherever we need to. And then I've created a data frame called price, which is downloading State Bank of India price for about six years or so. This is starting 2017 and it's ending on 2013, uh, I would say July. And then we'll take a look at the data frame, right? So we can very clearly see that the data frame that we have has the data and it is OHLCV, which is open, high, close and volume. Sorry, open, high, low, close and volume. Open is the opening price for the day. High is the highest price of the day. Low is the lowest and lastly, the closing price of the day. And finally, the volume trade. What we are doing after this, we are calculating a sum of additional technical indicators. Uh, this isn't meant to give you an exhaustive list of the kind of technical indicators or in machine learning terminology features that you can come up with. This is just an indication of the kind of calculations we can do. So what I'm doing is the first calculation is high minus low. And that is what I'm capturing in a column. And then I'm capturing open minus close. These are very common uh, differences that people want to understand. What is the spread of the data? How much did it open? How much did it close? What's the difference between high minus low? And using this, you can probably understand the sell pressure and the buy pressure. After this, we have moving average calculations. I have done three different moving averages. One is a three day moving average. Second is a 10 day moving average. And then lastly, the 30 day moving average. These are all simple moving averages. There's no exponential or anything like that. And you can just do it by doing the mean function on the data frame. This is a very standard operation that you can execute. After this, what we are doing is we are generally adding some additional parameters. One of them is standard deviation to measure the volatility. Then there's RSI, which is a very strong indicator used to understand ranges of buy and sell. It's uh, it's an oscillator kind of moves between zero and hundred. It's it's a very popular indicator. And then there's a Williams percentage indicator, which is tracking the momentum around it. And finally, we are tracking the price rise, which is happening every day. So in a nutshell, I am generating some technical indicators around it. And then we'll just take a look at the data frame again. As you can see, I've added all the columns, but along with the columns, it's very clear that there are some NANs which result in due to the mean shifting, due to the shift operation. And for that, we need to just do a drop NA. And now if we see drop NA is a function which can, you know, just drop NANs and I'm doing that for simplicity. There could be other ways of capturing the data, but you know, so far so good. I have enough data here to uh, basically train a neural network model. Then you can see the data frame again, and uh, we have the data frame here where I have all the columns captured. Separate the X and Y, split the data set, which is basically 70% split into training and 30% into testing. And then do some standard feature scaling. This is a very standard model that I'm doing. Uh, so I'm not doing extensive feature engineering or, you know, or doing a lot of hypothesis testing on this. It's fundamentally a straightforward model. So all I'm trying to do is do a standard scalar and fit it on the training and testing data. After that, I'm going to go to building my neural network. And for that, I'm going to use Keras, sequential and dense. This is going to be a very simple model, a very simple neural network model. So we'll just call the classifier and we'll add some layers to it. 
and as you can see in the classifier dot summary we have couple of layers into it we have basically three layers into it first is a dense layer second is another dense layer and lastly the final layer to it and then i'm going to train the classifier this is again not the intent is not to you know get a robust model that can be used to do actual trading but the intent is more geared towards explaining a process and then absolutely there could be more stuff to it and then finally we go to predicting the stock prices uh, which we have done and then we generate some returns and all these are standard stuff uh, if you are familiar with trading code uh, what's fundamentally happening is I'm calculating log price, I'm calculating the shift between two days and I'm getting a return. And then finally generating a plot. And as you can see, this is a plot and here's a good way to do a comparison. So from 2021 to 2023, uh, you know, there's this much data that I have and the market returns are pretty much in the red line. And in the green line, you have data which is, uh, you know, based on your strategy. Now, I wouldn't say this is a great strategy or anything that's uh, fundamentally not the intent for this. Uh, however, I would definitely say that uh, this does good amount of movement. You can change a certain number of parameters. You can change a couple of parameters and uh, basis that you would be able to notice that, you know, the model uh, either works very strongly or, you know, overfits or underfits and depending on that, you can make a decision. And after this, the goal would be to use these predictions, do back testing, and then move forward to building a more, uh, you know, repeat the process a couple of times, get a robust model out, do a little bit of back testing with that, and fundamentally use that model to deploy in the market. All right. So that's what I really wanted to talk about today. Thank you guys for listening. Bye bye.